This is Linda Sadgas from ScrappersGuide.com here to tell you about the changes and new features of Photoshop Elements 8. In this video I'll demonstrate how to use a new tagging feature in the organizer called People Recognition. So this will be for Windows only. Mac users have a similar feature in iPhoto. People Recognition is one of the great new features of Photoshop Elements 8. It's a little quirky, sometimes you get unexpected results, but it's really fun using. In fact, it's almost addicting. So let's give it a test run. You can either select a group of thumbnails in the organizer first, or you can simply start People Recognition and it will involve your entire catalog. I recommend selecting good photos of the main people you want tagged and running People Recognition on them first to establish who they are and create tags for them with a good photo picture. I already created tags for my family members. So under People and under Family I have my four family members and then I have two relatives under the Relatives tag. I'll select a good thumbnail for each of them. So here's my daughter and I'll control click on one of my husband. We'll come down here and I'll control click on this one of my son and me and then also one of my mother and of my mother-in-law. In the Tags panel, click on the People Recognition icon, which is this little icon right here that looks like a Polaroid photo. And when the People Recognition panel comes up, it will show you one photo at a time with a white outline around each person's face. Click on the Who is this tag and type in a name for that person. Then click outside to confirm that and click the next arrow. So we'll put Charlie on here. Go to the next one. Now here's what's interesting. Who is this down here in this little section here? This is the really funny thing about people recognition. It sometimes selects the oddest objects for faces and it's really good for a laugh and then just click on the X to get rid of it and then click yes to the dialog box that comes up. Now we'll do the correct one up here. We'll type in Granny and go to the next one. For some reason people recognition really likes this dress of Granny's. When you have more than one person in a photo you should get an outline around each one. When you're finished with your sample set of photos click Done. Notice that I now have a picture in each of these tags. Now I'm ready to tackle my entire organizer. For the purposes of this demo I'm using a pretty small set of photos. I'll click in a gray area to deselect any of the photos that I had selected before and then I'll click on the icon to run the program and to start people recognition. I'll click OK to the question, are you sure you want to find people in all currently displayed photos? I'll say yes and then it will start analyzing each of those photos and this may take a while. Once it's done analyzing people I can just click on this little arrow to go to the next one and what it will do is ask me who is this or if it recognizes it it will say is this so and so. In this case it doesn't recognize it yet. So I'm going to click on this and it will give me some options down here from the ones that I already did. I'll click on Allison and as we go along it's going to be learning who Allison is. It takes a little while for it to learn. Here again is one of those strange little things that we're just going to get rid of. And on this one, now it says, is this Allison? It's starting to recognize Allison. So I'll click on the green check mark to say yes. And we'll go to the next one. And this is Allison. When somebody has a face that goes over sideways, it has a harder time connecting with that face. So you just have to get used to that fact. Front on faces it does pretty well, but side faces it has a harder time with. When you've named the majority of the people in the photos, instead of going through each photo one by one, click on Name More People. And the program will show you thumbnails of people and ask you to identify if they are the correct ones. So in this case it's identified Kathleen correctly and Granny correctly and Charlie correctly. So we'll say Save on that. Now we have more of Allison, more of Caleb, and more of me. And I'll click Save on that. It's doing really a very nice job. Here it recognized Charlie without his glasses on. 
and Allison. It's asking me which of these are not Charlie. So if I put my mouse over the thumbnail, I can click on the X mark to get rid of it if it is not Charlie. But it correctly identified all of these, so I'll say save. Now we come to some people that it doesn't recognize. So it's asking me to name this person. So I'll click in there and type in the new name. And this name is Carrie. For these, you'll need to type in each of the names. And when you're done, click Save. Now it's asking me which one of these are not Carrie. And it did a, actually a very good job of selecting the other Carrie photos. So I'll say Save. And finally, at the end, it comes to this part, which says, which of these people would you like to label? And uh, unfortunately, there is kind of a dark gray overlay on these photos that makes it hard to see. If you think there is a face in a label, you can mouse over the thumbnail to see a green check mark, and then you can click on it, and you can see that this is indeed a face. If you mouse over it again, it'll have the X to say, no, that wasn't a face after all. So let's say I looked at this one and clicked on it and said, no, that isn't a face. I can come back over it and delete it. So these are not faces, but these two are. So I'll click on the green check mark to accept that. And I'll choose Save for those. And it will ask me to name them. And here I'm being silly with some funny flower petals on my lips, so it can't recognize me there. And here Carrie is turned sideways, so it's having a hard time there. And here Caleb has his glasses on. So it takes a while to learn some of these people. We'll click Save. And now it tells me, congratulations, you have named everyone in your selection. And I'll click OK. Notice that Photoshop Elements created a tag for Carrie and put it under the People category, since I didn't already have a tag made for her. You can move the tag by clicking and dragging it to a People subcategory, such as Friends. The face recognition program doesn't catch every person every time. If a face is tilted sideways or in profile, it will probably not be tagged. To check whether a photo is tagged properly, look for the visual clue of a people tag, this little blue tag right here, next to the photo. In Carrie's case, two of her photos were not tagged, this one right here and this one. Since she's the only person in the photo, it's easiest just to select those photos. I'll click on one and control click on the other one and then drag the tag onto one of the selected photos. If you have more than one person in the photo and you suspect that someone didn't get tagged because they're looking sideways, you can click on the photo and check the Properties panel. If you don't see the Properties panel, right-click on the photo and choose Show Properties. Make sure you have the tag icon selected and then it will show you the keyword tags. And in this case, my name was not added because my head is bent sideways. I'll click on the People Recognition icon and show you the second way to add tags. Click on the Add Missing Person button in the lower left corner. A resizable white outline will appear in the upper left corner of the photo. You can click and drag to make it bigger. Let's bring this down just a little ways and then click and drag outward from a handle. Then I'll move it over my face and click and type my name in. And now I can click Done. So there you have a very fun way to tag the people in your photos. The more you use people recognition, the more Photoshop Elements learns how to recognize the familiar people in your photos. This video lesson was taken from my DVD-ROM Learn Digital Scrapbooking, which has over six hours of training. You can get this training free inside the Photoshop Elements 8 box for Windows at Costco. It should be available starting about mid-October 2009. Look for my name, Linda Satgast, on the label. If you don't have access to Costco or Costco Online, or if you're a Mac user, you can find the same training at my website, scrappersguide.com.